Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that? There, of course there is. Welcome in any case. This is somehow the live version of the Acquia podcast. Larry, can you talk a little bit about what led you to write your blog post called Getting Off the Island in January? Back in 2007 uh, at uh, DrupalCon Sunnyvale, which I don't know, we kind of called DrupalCon in retrospect. It still wasn't called that at the time. Um, one of the keynotes was Rasmus Leerdorf, who made an impassioned plea to everyone present, guys, please stop supporting PHP 4. Because at the time, hosts were still running PHP 4, so projects couldn't use PHP 5, and so hosts wouldn't upgrade to PHP 5 because no one was using it, and so the PHP core team still had to support PHP 4, and no one was happy with this. And so there's a you know, big chicken and egg problem. And the answer actually came from someone in the Joomla community who at the time was a coworker of Ken Rickard of the Drupal community. And he noted, you know, none of these projects are willing to move first to PHP 5 because you know, then they, they'd lose market share because all of the hosts would then not be able to run them. So what we really need to do is all do it together. I said this is a great idea. You know, pinged Ken. He got me in contact with um, Jonah Braun from Joomla, who's the Joomla developer I was talking about. Things started happening, and before you know it, we had the Go PHP 5 project, which ran in uh, 2007, summer, uh, and was basically just a bunch of projects getting together and saying, you know what, we're done with PHP 4. As of you know, this date next year, 2008, everything we release is going to require PHP 5.2 at least. Hosts, you're on notice, let's do this. And within a month, we had over 100 projects and over 200 web hosts signed up. And we assassinated a programming language. And this was, I think, the first big, serious collaboration between a lot of different major PHP projects ever. Um, and that grew out of, you know, Drupal developers were the first people pushing this. We had certainly had others, but it was initially Drupal people pushing it. And pretty much nothing else happened collaboration-wise for a number of years after that. When, you know, fast forward now, we're starting to work on Drupal 8, and Dries taps me as the web services lead. One of the things I look at and say, you know, we need a better abstracted way of handling HTTP information. We need, um, you know, some way of dealing with requests and responses, not super globals in print. We need something more advanced than that. Let's not write that ourselves. Let's at least try and see if there's another option. And... We looked at a couple of options and settled on the Symfony HTTP Foundation library to just do that one little piece. And you know, we started working with that, kept developing, kept developing, and realized, wait a minute, the stuff we're trying to build, other Symfony components beyond just HTTP Foundation, they're already, already doing this. So if it makes sense to just outsource this one piece to tried and tested good code that we then don't have to deal with writing ourselves, can we outsource something else? Can we outsource something else? And it just kind of snowballed from there. So for me, that's kind of the pathway for me. Uh, and seeing the benefits that we get out of that as a Drupal, and then getting involved in Symfony as a result of that, looking at the large PHP community and, and seeing, you know, there's a ton out there that we as Drupalers just aren't seeing that you know, we've just been in our own little corner of the world, you know, okay, large corner of the world, and, you know, a lot of this has passed us by. P Drupal 7 is a PHP 4-based framework, architecturally. The language has evolved ridiculously far since then, and that just kind of passed us by because we weren't paying attention. We need to be paying attention to those kind of trends, not just so we don't get left behind, so we can help drive those, and I think we really can. You were talking about how you had looked at one particular piece of, of Symfony that would solve one problem and then realized that uh, uh, we could actually do 
well by adopting a whole bun bunch of other pieces of that puzzle and, and stopping re in reinventing the wheel in our own idiosyncratic way and, um, you know, become part of the up-to-date larger PHP community. Tell us why should, why should we not make Drupal, the CMS, simply a layer on top of the Symfony framework? If we were starting from ground zero right now, there would be a viable argument to make for that. Mm -hmm. um, places where I think that might be problematic, Symfony is structurally, you know, the full stack framework is structurally designed on the assumption that all changes are code changes. Your configuration is, uh, you know, config files that you edit and then deploy to production after a compile step to generate you know, code and such. It's really built around that model. It's not built around the site builder clicky clicky model. So I don't know. It might be possible to build a site builder clicky clicky model on top of the Symfony full stack. I've never tried. Um, but that's not really what the full stack framework is optimized for. That said, there is an, another project, uh, Symfony CMF, that is trying to build what sounds like a Drupal competitor to me um, on full stack framework. And ironically, people from that project have been helping with Drupal 8, and we've even collaborated with them on the routing system, so we're using the same routing code between the two of us. Um, so in the best in the best open source traditions, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so what are the benefits that developers are getting and are going to get from uh, these changes? So that's not a short list. Uh, I'd say some of the, the major improvements are if you're doing some, anything other than just returning a page, Drupal 8 makes that a first class citizen. Drupal 7 and the earlier was a page building tool that built a page at a time. And any other model you wanted to use beyond that, web services, um, building page in pieces, whatever, was a hack. It was a, a semi-supported hack at best. That's not the case in Drupal 8. At, at this point, we are you know, a, a fully robust HTTP-capable system, so you can do all kinds of, of stuff um, you know, beyond just pages. The core system is a lot more loosely coupled, which means it's a lot easier to change. Um, a good, good example there. Years and years and years ago, someone was asking if there was some way to override certain pieces of Drupal core which at the time meant stuff in the includes directory. And the basic answer was, no, not really, because that requires modifying functions in place, because PHP doesn't let you redefine a function after it's defined, and so on and so on. So yeah, you can't really do that. Drupal is now mostly, at the architectural level, at the, the platform level, objects that are configured using a dependency injection container which means you can, in fact, override pieces of core and even reassemble those pieces differently without technically hacking core, because you're not modifying code, you're just manipulating the configuration at a much lower level. So you, know, you have a lot more flexibility to rip out and replace pieces of Drupal without really hacking core if you want to. For module developers, it's a good idea to approach it the same way. Um, you know, Drupal 7 and the earlier had a general approach of passing blobs of data around and letting it get modified in various places. So render arrays, uh, form arrays, alter hooks, that was the mindset where you had this big blob of state and you manipulate that state until you're ready to do something with it. Problem is that you know, requires everything is treated as a global essentially. You have to you know, think globally, you have to think of, okay, what else might be touching this big blob of state? And it, it ends up being a very limiting approach. Drupal 8, and good OO in general, is much more discrete services and taking actions on things. Um, so a, a good Drupal 8 module doesn't use anonymous arrays as the ultimate data object. You actually have a structured data object that has actual architecture that goes into it. You have service objects that can act on those or act on other events um, that then get wired together. So you have a lot more 
more discrete small pieces that you can use, which means you have to think in smaller discrete pieces. And these smaller discrete pieces, this is a, a trend that Drupal's been following for years, where you know you used to have a recipe module or a you know biography module or whatever, and then that went away and got replaced by just, oh, you configure nodes and fields and views. And that is a smaller piece. We've now taken that smaller piece trend next step, and so now you have lots of discrete little objects that you can assemble into functionality, which you assemble into a site, which again gives you far more flexibility and also unit testability. So I wonder, though, um, uh, you know, this abstracting everything out, it's, it's pretty clear to the developer point of view, if I abstract these things out, I get more flexibility, I get more power, right? But um, Robert Douglas talked at Drupal Camp London and talked about, yeah, we've got all these beautiful abstractions. Yeah, it's good for developers. But you know, here's how to make a gallery of images in Drupal, mm -hmm. right? And then how many modules are there? How many solutions are there? How many recipes are there? Um, and you know, whew, uh, it, it's not just drag and drop, turn it on, whatever. Is there a is, is, how do you how do you pitch that to people when they come back and say oh it's it's kind of hard? So there's a couple of answers to that, and it depends on what level you're looking. Uh, one is, do you really want someone else's image gallery, or do you want your image gallery? If you want your image gallery, that takes work to to define what your image gallery is, and that's kind of the trade-off with a tool chain rather than big tools. It's the move from you know, big predefined Lego blocks to you know more generic small Lego blocks. You have to then assemble the blocks yourself. You don't get an entire wall of a building out of the box for you, but you can make that wall whatever you want it to be. And on the whole, that's a good trade-off. I think we've certainly seen in Drupal site building over the years that that trend has been a good one. The flip side to that, and this is a place where I know Robert has uh, strong feelings and I mostly agree with him, um, there is a market for prepackaged assemblies, uh, you know, the, the Lego kits that come half assembled for you, and that's, you know, traditionally we have used or tried to use the features module for that. Drupal wasn't really designed to support that though, so features module is the least bad option we have in Drupal 7 and Drupal 6 for that problem space. And that's not features fault, that's Drupal is not, op not just not designed for that. Drupal 8, not only do we have these smaller discrete pieces, we also have a much better base for building things like that with uh, the configuration management initiative. And far more of core is now built using tools that could be packaged. So the idea of, like it, in Drupal 7, if you want to have a module that ships with a default node type, it's really kind of ugly. You have to, you know, have a, a setup script for it in your uh, install file, or you need to, um, you know, rely on the features module and hope that features can handle your content type because features and content types really don't like each other. In Drupal 8, you just ship with a config file that defines your content type out of the box. Cool. There'll probably still be rough edges in places we hate it, but, well, it's software. Uh, but that should be a lot simpler. Drupal's just perfect. <laughs> yeah, Always. Kind of, that, that's just software except for Drupal.